What's up YouTube? So today we're at my buddy Trey's shop and right behind me is a 1984 Chevrolet C10 or Silverado, Chevy truck, whatever you want to call it. She is right behind me. Now he bought this thing back in July, bought it in Houston, Texas, and he got a smoking deal on it, I believe. For today's current prices, he paid five grand. Not a bad deal. It's all original, unmolested truck, but it hasn't ran since 2004 so today we're going to do a little will it run and possibly see if it moves under its own power all right guys i know y'all like being tuned in on the mug well let's go ahead and do a little walk around on the truck and see what we're working with i'm gonna start out here in the front look at that grill no damage nothing broken bow tie still in place that looks like it's in good shape bumper's really good the only thing really broken on it is that little spoiler on the bottom. But if it were my truck, I'd get rid of that. Yep, she's still dirty from when he found it. Hasn't washed it or cleaned it up. It's really good, nice and straight. Yeah, guys, go ahead and utilize that chicken eye and look down the side of that truck. Look how straight that is. Man, smoking deal. Rally wheels need a little TLC. Yeah, it looks good under here. This is a solid truck. I really don't see any rust on the rockers or anything. I love this color scheme. You got the dark navy blue on the bottom. You got the light metallic blue in the middle. And then you got the dark blue up top. Looks really nice. Then we got the trim back here. Looks like nothing's missing from what I can tell. Looks like his tire was flat. Been sitting on that one spot. I think we got a little bit of a don't look like it's a large leak, look like it's just a minor leak over here at the differential. I think it'd be alright. Nope, he needs to replace that seal. Oh, we got the twin pipes on the driver's side. Man, that thing is pretty dry. I believe Trey said this is a dual gas tank setup. Uh-oh. Got a little whiskey dent right there. I think that can be fixed. Not that big a deal. And look at the inside of this bed. Fender wells are straight. Look at that. Right now, the only problem I see with the truck is it ain't in my garage. <laughs> Tailgate is in great shape. Looks a whole lot better than my 66 Taco Gate truck, but nice and straight. Even that step bumper's in good shape. Same thing on the passenger side, just nice and straight. Look at that. We found a really nice truck. Looks good under there. Not seeing any rust. Man. I think he is going to be replacing all this trim because yeah, it looks pretty bad. I think what, what he wants to do is do a little clean up and buff it out. Get that old original paint to shine up again. Beauty rings for all the rally wheels. I believe he said he's going to keep the rally wheels and just paint them up. Now right, let's check out the interior here. Man, look at the door panel. She a little dirty, but look pretty clean. Missing those little chrome caps. Look at the seat in this thing. Look at that. Just needs a little TLC, but man, that thing is immaculate. We do have just a little bit of Scaly pitting right there on that rocker panel. Well, other than that, look at the dash. Look at that. There's that dual fuel tank switch. I wonder if the boom booms work in this thing. We'll have to find out when we put a battery in it. Looks like it's got 11,000 032 on the old odometer. That's rolled over at least once because that pedal's pretty worn. Don't know if that gas gauge works, but about, about a quarter of a tank. This is one clean ride. He did a little fix on the door. PVC, the PEX pipe. Said he used a piece of PEX pipe on this uh, 
deal right there. Now you see the windows are up. I'd say that's a good fix there. A little bit of rust there, but these are little chrome caps that go in the door. They tend to always fall off and little snaps break off. Headliner a little saggy, but it's there. Looks like it's got a crack in the windshield, but I'm sure he'll be replacing that. Some more of that PEX piping cover. Let's we'll see what this one shuts. Yeah. I don't think you're going to find a much better deal than this one. All right, guys. Let's open up the hood and see what we got to work with because that's where we're going to be today, under the hood. There it is in all her glory. 305. The crappiest V8 Chevy ever made, in my opinion. Sorry to offend any of y'all 305 people, but I don't like these engines. But that's all right. This ain't my truck. We're going to work with what we got. If it was my truck, I'd keep it in there for a while, get other things fixed up and running. But yeah, it's all there. Now, to get a head start, they went ahead and, and skeeted a little M&M juice down the cylinders. So there's the sparklers right there. Might have been running a little on the rich side. I don't know. So there's the spark plug wires. You got them marked. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. That one wire looks pretty good, don't you think? I think we'll just reuse that one because, I mean, it's got a little bit of fraying to it, but it'll be all right. We got a little hair. Didn't you say this thing was parked in the garage? Yes. That might be a cat or a Sasquatch. I don't know. We got some hair going on here. Some fuzzy stuff going on. It's kind of everywhere. <laughs> but this is what we're working with, guys. A 305. Like I said, he's already skeeted a little M&M juice down the cylinders. That stuff's been marinating all week. So I say first things first, put a battery in here. See if any of the uh, wires hold the smoke. If we don't let any of the smoke out of the wires, I say we turn the key on. See what happens there. See what works. What doesn't. I want to see if the radio works. If the radio works, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and just jam all day to whatever the radio will play. No, we're going to get this thing running. That's the whole goal today. 305, firing on all eight. He's got a bunch of new parts over here on the floor, and we also got a battery right there on the table. So let's go ahead and go ahead and put the battery in and see what happens. All right, here comes the big test. Right, here comes the negative. Don't hear anything sizzling. Smell anything, yep. All right, Trey, next thing, let's turn the key on, see what happens. Oh, we got a buzzer, guys. Radio's on. Dietary supplements specifically designed to support little tummies and comes in a delicious yeah. bubblegum flavor. Pepto Kids gummies for ages four and up. That's crazy, the radio works in this thing. The factory radio works. Roll motor work? We got to turn it on, I think. To something. Yeah. Blinkers working this thing? Yeah, that's working. Oh, yeah. Try the other blinker. Go ahead and pull the, uh, see if the headlights work. Or the lights. Brake lights. Dang. High beams work. We got headlights. Oh, driver side low uh, high beams out. Uh, she's a little, she's a little crack too. So is the other side. So it needs some high beams for sure. That's crazy, huh? Dang. Everything works just about. Oh yeah. They work good too. <laughs> That's top speed there. She might need a motor. And maybe some blades. Maybe a little looby dooby? Possibly. Door locks work? That one's going up and down. Passengers? Oh, that one went down that time. Ah, there that. you go. Holy smokes. The windows work? Uh oh. No, that don't work. Ooh. Trying to. She's not happy. That one's not. No, none of the windows work. Let's see if the passenger door switch works. No. 
So none of the door, none of the window switches work. Now we got some music. Here we go. Get out of the way, F100. You're in the way. So let's see if this thing's got any engine oil in it. He's got a little bit there. Let's see. Check that one more time. I tell you what, she's got plenty of hair on that dipstick. Looks pretty good. It smells like old oil. Maybe a little touch of fuel. <laughs> yeah, she's got some hair on her. Kind of wonder if this truck was built in France. It's got a lot of hair. Let's see if this 700 R4 has got any fluid as well. We have plenty of red on that. So we're safe to start this engine, turn it over. We got engine oil. We got ATF. So we got any coolant. Oh yeah, we got some coolant in there. We got the green juice. So we got the brown juice, green juice, and the red juice all look pretty good. All right, before we turn the ignition stick over, see if the starter works and this engine spins over, we're gonna go ahead and try to turn it over by hand, see if it rotates. Plus, we wanna get some of that M&M oil out of the cylinders. That way we ain't, you know, skeeting that stuff all over the place, making a, making a mess. Look like murder she wrote in here. All right, we got a game plan, let's get to it. Here we go. Yeah. First crank. Oh yeah, she's, oh, man. she's fun. Look at that. She moved pretty easy. That's good. Oh, there she goes. She's starting to skeet the m and juice out. Oh yeah. Man, this is one heavy engine. Well, she broke free. Not that it was stuck to begin with, but that's a good sign. She's rotating very nice. Try to see what the starter does. You think we got the bulk of the... Oh, she's not making any noises anymore. You think like we got no... the bulk of the... the uh... M&M &M juice out? You think we got all that skeeted out? Dude, I don't know. I ain't seen it. Looks that. like it. Either that or it went past the rings and into the... I think it probably went past the rings. Rotate real good now. I don't think we got all the oil that's going to come out of the cylinders out. So the engine rotates pretty smooth, pretty easily. So now we need to just go ahead and send a little voltage down those battery cables directly to the starter and see if this engine spins over. Oh, yeah. yeah, we did ourselves real good here. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with the door locks, we locked ourselves out. And would you know where the keys are at? They're off inside the seat. So yeah, over here at Finally Tuned Idiot Garage, we do things the hard way. Well guys, after about 30 minutes of trying to get into this truck, it ain't happening. So old Trey's gonna call a locksmith, let them do the locksmith things. Hopefully we can access those keys and uh, get back inside the truck. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and look up the auxiliary key switch directly to the starter hit that button and see if this old spin engine spins over after that we got a whole bunch of other stuff to do we got a box full of parts down there enough chit chat and let's get to it i'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger do you want to do it i'll let you do the I'll, honors I'll it's your it. truck i'll pull it you ready i'm ready all right here we go starter works that is success right there. That's a good sign. So. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? What? We forgot to disconnect the fuel. Fuel line. But oh well. Yeah, we got to disconnect the fuel line. because we, <laughs> We'll be sucking up some 20-year-old gas. We don't know what's in there. But that was just So that's quick. a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. It's probably a dry, crusty hose, so it might just be better to cut it. So as you can see, there's the fuel pump. And we got three three lines coming off of it. 
I'm 100% positive the, the big hose is the suck hose going to the tank and then the little hose is the send it back hose or the return. And then that hard line is probably gonna go to the carburetor. So I say we just cut this. Oh man, that thing is hard as a rock. Yeah, we cut that hose right there and that'll stop. If it's gonna suck any fuel, it would keep it from doing that. It would probably just put it onto this nice cardboard that's on the ground here. Oh, nope, oh, oh. You got yeah. a little fuel in there. Yeah, she's got some fuel. There it is. Now we can crank up. Now we can do a little compression test. While we're down here on the bottom, it's like it might have a little power steering leak. You know, Chevys are known for their leaks. Oh yeah. Fun times down here. These big old bulky air cleaners. Yeah, cleaners, little air cleaners. They got vacuum hoses and Yeah, back in the 80s they had it figured out, didn't they? With all this stuff here. Ooh. There it is. The old QJ. We're hooked in on the old number one cylinder here. How's that carburetor linkage feel? Feels sticky. Feels good, man. Yeah. I think it might have an accelerator pump. Oh, I, I, hear, I, heard it, I heard it squeak. You hear that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the throttle stuck open with a approved screw stick. All right, Trey, let's bump it over and see what number one's got for us. Okay, just tell me. Man. 150. Uh oh, I thought you were gonna say bad news. <laughs> no, that's good news there, 150. I like that. Okay. That first stroke is about 120. All right, I'm ready when you are. Cylinder three. She's a little on the weak side. She's right at 105, maybe? 105? Yeah. I'm ready, Trey. Oh yeah, yeah, first stroke was 130. That must be the locksmith. 170 on number five. Number five is alive. All right, seven, what do you got? Yeah, that's good. That's good, about 160. All right guys, where well, the locksmith just left, we're back in. Locksmiths ain't cheap. They get paid very well. We're back in the saddle. We got keys. So now we can test the ignition switch and see if it actually sends a little current to the starter. All right, now Trey's gonna test it through the actual key switch. All right, let's go. That's good, 160. Oh, really? Is the season. Say hello to friends you know. Oh, hello the mistletoe hung where you can see. Somebody waits for you to serve once for me. All right, go ahead. Oh, that's all. That's about 175 there. All right, number six, see, let's see what you got. That's not bad. All right, number eight, join the party with the rest of them. Let's go. That's good, 160. Well, the old engine's got good compression, except number three, a little on the weaker side, but above 100 is good enough for it to run. So I think what we're gonna do now is see if this thing's got spark. We're gonna use one of these old spark plug wires. He's got a spark tester and a sparkler stuck to the end of it. So let's see if this thing's got spark. And if it does, he's got new wires and plugs. We'll go ahead and replace all that. And I guess we'll go ahead and build a auxiliary fuel system of some sort. Ski a little fuel down the, uh, the old QJ there, see what happens. We got our spark spark tester hooked up and the sparklers right there let's see what happens no 
Uh oh. No spark. No sparkies. I'd be ashamed if this thing was put down because it just had a bad ignition control module. <laughs> I agree. Oh, you know what? We gotta turn the key on. I told you over here at Finely Tuned Idiot Garage, we do things the hard way. Yeah, let's turn that key on. Let's see what that does. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we got some spark. She's a sparky. So, now that we've tested the ignition system correctly, we got spark. So, what do you want to do now? Wires, plugs, go for the glory, or you still want to prime the oiling system? We can go for the glory. It's up to you. Like I said, this is your, I think your we've, deal. I think we've cranked on it quite a bit. I, I feel like she's probably at least pumped up some lifters by now. I guess the biggest thing as far as taking that distributor out is you'd have to set it on top dead center, mark it, pull it, prime the oiling system, then get the oiling shaft lined back up where it was, doing all that. See, you got all, you know, you're you way back here. See, Ford guys, this is why we lower Chevy trucks, because we can't reach the, the dang distributor. So we got to lower them down so we can wretch it back there. Y'all F100 guys, y'all up front, y'all don't have to lower them. That's why I always want, why y'all lowering, y'all ruin, ruin the trucks when you lower them? Well, we can't reach the distributor without it. So that's why we do four, six drops. So I guess we're gonna pass priming the system. So that's gonna save us a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So let's replace the ignition system and then build an auxiliary fuel system. All right, before we put the sparklers in it, we need to check the uh, spark plug gap. This being a HEI, it's more than likely 45 thousandths. Which, what do you know, there it is on that decal. So let's go ahead and gap these AC Delcos to 45 thousandths. We'll go ahead and put a little anti-sneeze on the uh, threads. Get all these threaded in, and then we'll change out them hairy looking wires that we got with some fresh ones. <laughs> I think I found the misfire. That's number one. There's number three. We just got to find the other end. We had to jack up the truck, change uh, the uh, left side of the uh, spark plugs here because they were routed all up by the exhaust pipe. Three of them were Bluetooth because they were no longer making connection. And I noticed we got a PH5 made by Fram. Them filters right there are no count. So while we got this thing jacked up, we're going to go ahead and change oil and get rid of that ugly orange thing. Stay away from the Fram, guys. Stay away. Boy, howdy. Trey's struggling on the, uh... <laughs> on the, on the uh, oh, boy. Put this on. Drain plug on there. Oh. Wow. You need to knock yourself out. I feel say if you can't get it off, just sell the truck to me. I'll get it. <laughs> that was bad. No water. Oh, oh look man. at that pen. That pen's full of... Oh. Yeah, that's some ugly stuff. Shavings, all kinds of stuff. Maybe Derek from Vyscape likes to run the old oil. I, I think this is a good idea to change it. I do too. That's pretty bad. Especially since, you know, I'm keeping this truck. Oh yeah, this ain't a... And it's not gonna be just going and sitting in a outdoor area. Yeah, in the field. Yeah, that old oil was thin. Kind of wondering if we should jack it up and take the stands off and let it down. I think a lot of the oils, because we lifted it up, it's probably yeah. back here. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Just let it down. Yeah. That's... Yeah, we can do that. I think we should do that. Let that okay. green out. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, a little bit more. You can smell the fuel from over here. <laughs> yeah, we'll let that drain for a minute and then we'll change that ugly filter. Went ahead and filled the uh, oil filter with a little zinc additive because we don't even know if it's got flat tappet lifters or roller. It's probably flat. Filled up. The tray's gonna go get a funnel for the awl. I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a haircut. 
Man, there's a lot of hair. And I think this is just a better idea to put fresh oil in something, especially if you know you've got good compression, you know it's gonna run. Go ahead and change oil. And guys, I always wondered what, what were they thinking in the 80s with all these vacuum lines and hard lines and soft lines and there's lines everywhere. You got this coffee can, canister looking thing with lines and look at all this crap. But that's how they did it in the 80s. They were trying to figure it out, trying to save the environment from the har harmful pollutants coming out the old tips, the old muffler pipes there. Now, you open the hood of a brand new vehicle, you don't see none of that crap. Yes, you learn as you go. I learn as I go every, every day of the week, sometimes twice on Sunday. Never again, PH5, never again. Trey was telling me to look up under this side of the truck. Let's see what it looks like. Look at that. Any of you guys up north looking at this right now, y'all are probably crying. Look at this. Yeah, I've got two tanks. This is one solid rig, one solid truck. Just needs a little TLC. That's what I'm here for. All right, it's lunchtime. I got a surprise on what we're cruising in. Let me show you. Oh yeah, guys, there it is. 1965. Short bed. Big back window. That's what we're taking to lunch. This thing is super nice. And check it out. It's got a straight tailgate, unlike mine. If you hadn't seen the last video I did on my Chevy Love, you'll understand what I'm talking about. This thing is super clean. Believe it or not, this isn't wood. That's that aluminum looking bed floor. Makes it look like wood. Yeah, old Trey, he's got some, he got some stuff out here. He's got some toys. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to do a little walk around of all the stuff that he has. You can see all the toys he's got. Yeah, we need to do a wheel run on that 55. back to the shop see if we can get that 084 running freedom baby have you told them it's freedom oh that's right my buddy trey said that the name of the truck is freedom we freed it yeah we freed it freed it from the garage and we got it on july 4th independence day there you go now you know the name watch it easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> let's monitor the sniper situation here is this a sniper system or is this a terminator? Uh, a sniper, a high EFI sniper. sniper, yeah. That's what I need, guys. Overdrive, look at that. back from lunch and that cheeseburger was quite tasty plus I enjoyed the ride in the old 65 what me and Trey was talking about doing before we hook up any electric fuel pumps we're gonna since we already cut the line to the manual fuel pump we're gonna take some fresh hose run it into a gas tank or a gas can somewhere around here we'll find some container that'll hold some fuel and see if that pump will suck a little fuel if it does then we can go for it see if that thing's gonna run off the manual fuel pump. If it doesn't, I brought my electric pump, 
He's got his electric pump. We got we got pumps. We'll get some fuel pumped into that carburetor. But we're gonna hear this thing run today. I can promise you that. So what I'm gonna do, he's got some line wrenches. I'm gonna go ahead and break that fitting loose because it looked like somebody used the open-ended wrench when they should have used the line wrench. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can crack that thing open and see what squirts out of it. Might be some crappy gas in there. Plus, ain't there supposed to be a tray? Ain't there supposed to be some filters in? I think there's a fuel filter inside that carburetor. So I'll go ahead and check that, make sure that's clean, and then... That'll give us a verification, too, if it's pumping. If we can get the gas will pump out of that line. You're hearing it. We got a game plan. Let's get to it. Oh, yeah. She's tight. I got an idea. Oh, yeah. A little Lavrage gets it every time. Well, Trey thought he had a filter and he probably does. He just can't find it. So what we're going to do temporarily is not run that and just stick this back in and then hook it all back up. All right, before we hook this fuel system up to the carburetor, let's see if there's any trash in this line. All right. Pulsing. wonder if I should have primed it. All right, so with, this time we tried to prime up the fuel line with some true fuel. So let's see if that does anything. I don't think that pumps any good. You saying you feel it pulsating? Yeah, I can feel it pulse. Probably should have already taken off by now, huh? I wouldn't think it would have unless it's just a weak pump. The only other thing I can think of is put fuel in the carburetor and see if it starter fluid and maybe the speed of the engine will oh, yeah. get the pump to pump faster. I don't know. Don't do, well, yeah. That's the only other thing I can think of. I'm gonna fill the bowls with a little of this. There you go. Get most of it on the carburetor. It works better. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's way too much. Really? My job is done. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. 20 years this thing's been setting. It just fired right up. It's almost as if we know what we're doing here. All right. So instead of hooking up an electric fuel pump, old Trey's got a manual fuel pump replacement for this truck. So by the time we finish wiring up and hooking up the electric pump, we probably would have already had the manual one swapped out. So that's what he's doing right now. Jacking up the truck. And we're gonna put this manual fuel pump in. Man, this thing just busted right off, so you know it's gonna do it again. Sounds like a game plan to me. So guys, while Trey is changing out that manual fuel pump, I thought I'd do a walk around in his shop and show you all the, all the cool stuff he has around here. Square body, I don't know the year. He said this is one of his first trucks, if not his first truck, but it's a project truck for him. Obviously, the 65 let's do another walk around on that because this thing is nice i'll tell you what seeing this right here makes me want to cut mine down that's right guys i said it i might cut mine down sorry to offend y'all long bed people but this is where it's at right here These, this short bed stuff this is where it's at yes we do have an f100 but this is a good looking F100. This is the brightest style I like. One of my favorites. I actually sent him the Facebook market ad for this. And he picked it up, I think, that weekend. Interesting how that patina happened like that. Look at that. That is pretty cool. That grill's in pretty decent shape. I think this is a 66, if I'm not mistaken. 
He's already done some work to it. I think he's lowered the front of it. Dropped arms there. I'm sure he's gonna be doing the back pretty soon. She needs a little work on the inside for sure. She definitely got a cool look on the outside. Looks like it might have had to repaint some point in its life. What else we got over here? I think this is a bread truck. I don't know the year or make. Pretty neat, pretty cool. She's definitely got some weatherization on there. There's the fenders for it. I think it's on some aftermarket frame, maybe an S10 or something. I don't remember. I just recently bought that Suburban. Not too bad a shape. Oh yeah. Pretty nice in here. I don't think there's any tears in the seats. Let's check out the driver's side. I mean, it needs some work in here. This old wood box here, I don't know. It looks like somebody custom made that. But uh, yeah, not a bad little find. Another short bed here. Some of this stuff I don't think belongs to him. I think this might be one of them, I'm not sure. I'd have to ask. Got an international travel all here. I think this belongs to somebody else. Look at that Dr. Pepper cooler. This thing is pretty, pretty cool. I have mixed emotion on these wheels. I think they look pretty good on here. Oh yeah. I like this. Ooh, she's got an LS swap. Somebody's doing some wiring repair. That looks approved. Pretty cool little ride. Let me take you to the other side of the shop and show you some other rides he has. Guys, I definitely want to do a will it run on this thing. I think he got this pretty cheap as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to do a will it run on this thing. And I think he tried to do the vice grip thing where he put tension on the belt and the fan and I think he got it to spin a little bit. So this may not be too hard of an one to get running if it ain't stuck. She has a four door. That's all right. These four doors are getting harder to find. I don't know what his plans are with it, but I know he got it pretty dang cheap. Now this F100 here, believe it or not, came along with the uh, Blue 66 I showed you earlier. So it's basically two trucks for, I can't remember what he paid for them. I think he paid 4,500 bucks for both. Not a bad deal. I don't remember what year this is. Check this thing out here. This is what I need. Family ride slammed on the ground. That is pretty neat. Needs a little cleanup, a little work here and there, but. Yeah, that seat needs to be redone. I can see the little torn up there. Carpet's a little, little tatty there. Oh. Yeah, this thing's laid out on the ground almost. This thing is awesome. I love this thing. Not as much as the 65, but I do like it. There's another truck he's working on. Put all this stuff back here. 
need to have this stuff enclosed, but when you got more projects than you do space, this is what happens, don't you see? I think this is a chopping block frame. I think that's their logo, chopping block. Dual compressors. That's one of those seamless spun tanks. I like that. Oh yeah, it's nice in here. That's, look at that seat. Definitely work in progress here, but so far so good. It's got that kill mat from Dynamat. I think that stuff's pretty good. There's a transmission there. This is a good looking OBS here. That door's locked on it. That's all right. We can look in there. That seat is super clean. Kind of reminds me of the seat I had in my white 1970. Same style and everything. This is definitely from the late 80s, maybe early 90s. I don't remember what year it is. Very nice truck. Very clean. Probably one of my second favorite trucks he has is this one right here. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not big on step sides, but I do do like this one. It's got a blue fender, so that's approved. Look at that seat. I know he just recently added this under the dash AC unit. I believe it's a vintage air unit. And it blows really cold. Got the original caps. I like that. Let's take a little sneak peek under the hood here. See what's powering this old 63. See, 63 is probably my favorite grill look in the front. Even though I like the 66 truck overall, my favorite, 63's got the better grill, I believe. There it is. Little straight six. 230, 250, I don't know. It's, it's, it's got six holes in line. Oh no, not vintage air. Looks like old air products. Okay. I stand corrected. But he says he loves driving this truck. Probably one of his favorite ones to drive. I like it. You think we're done? Let's go inside the shop. You might have seen in the background something that's been caught my eye as soon as I walked through the door. Let's take a closer look at that one because that one's a cream puff. Oh yeah. 1972. Check this thing out. This is a little bit more on the high-end restoration here. This don't get parked outside, don't you see? That mid-mount serpentine system. Hold on, let me turn the light on. See how I can see a little better there. That is nice. I like that air cleaner. US mags. Looks really good. Look at that interior. Very, very nice. I like that seat. Got the slosh tubs on it. That looks good. And you say you bought it this way? The Painted, the, I mean? The paint. Uh -huh. I did all the suspension. I lowered it. Did all the suspension brakes, wheels. Whoever painted this truck, they did a they did a fine job. Very nice paint. That thing is perfect. We're not done guys, we're not done. Got this 52 over here. Look how this thing patinaed. I like that. That's pretty neat. I don't guess this thing's ever been repainted. I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's been matte cleared. Oh, okay. It's just real dusty because it's been in my shop.
and that grill bumper. And then that chassis behind you is for that 52. What kind of chassis? Me? Ch oh, I see the name. Acme. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty dang cool. I like that. I like this 52 a lot. Of course, me and blue get along. I like blue, especially this light blue. You got one more right here. What year is this one? 85. My dad had one of these. It was 85 GMC. Same color and everything. Did not have one of those under the hood, though. It had a anemic 305. I bet that's got a little bit more HP than a 305. Another work in progress here. He's got a lot of projects going on. It looks like it has an interior in it. Now it's got carpet. Oh man, look at those door panels. Wow. My buddy Trey, he don't mess around when it comes to getting something dialed in. That is nice. Look at those look at those kick panels. That's nice. Wow. That's some kind of US mag. They look pretty good on here. Good patina. Looks like it may have had a camper at some point. Do you know if this thing had a camper on it? Uh, it had some real nasty bed rails that were screwed on it. Oh, I see. Like some nasty diamond plate looking bed rails. Gotcha. That's why it's all rusted under there. Makes sense now. This truck had a camper top. The three truck. Oh, it did? Yeah, this truck had a camper Wow, this thing is nice. Very, very nice. All right, well, you've seen all his cool projects. Some running, some under construction, work in progress as you would. Some are almost at the finishing line. I definitely, like, definitely want to see and hear this thing run when he gets it done. I do like this one. It's still not my favorite, Trey. You know my favorite one is. Sell 65. 65? Can't go wrong with that blue patina. Big back window short bed. All right, how are we looking on the fuel pump? Well, it's I see out. an old one there. It's out. Well, that's good. Everything hooked up, ready to go, or? No. We still got more stuff to do? I gotta, I gotta take this thing down and uh, clean up the, clean up the mounting surface. Oh, I see the fuel pump still right there, the new one. I was just going to uh, maybe take this apron off while I had it jacked up. I hear you. Yeah, that thing's in the way. I believe that's the engine that's going in that F100. It is. Yeah. Sneak peek, 350. Small block Chevy. If you want to get from point A to point B in a Ford, you got to stick a Chevy motor in it. That's right, I said it. What you going to do about it? <laughs> He's changing these manual fuel pumps is no fun. Especially trying to fight that hard line going from the carburetor down to the fuel pump. But I think we got it on. Trey's down there right now hooking up the new hoses to go to the gas tank over here. Once we get that done, we'll fill up the bowl with some uh, gas again and see if this thing will bust off just like it did earlier. All right, we're almost there, guys. All right, come on Freedom Truck, fire up again. After fighting with that fitting on the bottom going towards the fuel pump, 
I think Trey got it this time. He said it felt good going in and it snugged up good. So let's try for number three. Here we go. Leaking. Yeah, it's returning. Your pump's returning. Look at that, man. Fire right up, idling. Cold start, 20 years. I think the fuel pump's working. There are a few liquids rattling, but not too many. Yeah. Oh, here comes the big one. There it is. You got a you got a clogged muffler. be charging. Freedom's running. Freedom is finally free. After 20 years, look at it. And we have not fiddled with the carburetor at all. Hadn't touched the screw on it. How's it looking down there? Leaking. Leaking. Leaking? Big time? Dripping. It's dripping, dude. Uh, okay. I'm gonna have to. Uh, well, it's up to you if you want to shut it off. I mean, that's a win for the day, I think. Yeah. That marble mystery oil and M and M juice might help some of the liquid pump up uh, again. It might be a little sticky. I do know. like do like the little oh yeah. I've heard that works. Sometimes maybe a little ATF, bring the oil down some and put a little ATF, that might clean it up in there. I'd at least go forward. I'd... just fired right back up. Do it again. You know what? There's something to be said for them QJs. Yeah. A lot of people hate on them, but man. Sat for 20 years and it bust off like that? I may have to go and meet one of them things. They ugly though. That's amazing. That's a win right there. <laughs> yeah. He's a little chunky on the inside. Get some new mufflers. Some cornflakes there or something. Man, you all have seen one piece come out. Look like a, well. Did you get you got it on video though, right? <laughs> yeah. Looks like, look like somebody was taking a poop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that was a successful day. After 20 years, this 084 Silverado, also known as the Freedom Truck. She's free again. She's back running. We got a lot of issues we got to deal with, minor stuff. We got a fuel leak, try to address that. Need to see if those old gas tanks need to be removed and cleaned, or can we just run them as they are? Maybe do one of those cheap Wix filters that you can see through and see what kind of stuff the fuel pump sucks out of it. If it sucks out a lot of trash, then you know what old Trey's got to do. He's gonna have to drop the tanks and replace them or clean them or whatever he wants to do there. But all in all, That's a successful day. When you see rust chips on the floor, you know you won. Fuel on the floor. We kicked over the PH5. We're going to retire that thing. That pretty much wraps it up, I think. 
What's your future plans for this old freedom truck there, Trey? I want to lower it, get the paint uh, polished or corrected, and uh, just keep it keep it as stock as possible for now. Maybe do a delete on the smog and the emissions. Uh, maybe I don't know. I, that carburetor is very impressive. I, I think I might keep that carburetor on <laughs> Yes, there. I'm impressed with the QJ. Uh, new lower trim. Uh, take all the tint off of the glass. Just clean it up real nice. I got a, I got a picture I can text you on, kind of like the what, what I want, you it want to look, to look like. like. Yeah. yeah. Everything you do, you're saying I would do if it was mine. Clean I want to keep the interior all original. Like yeah. on this truck, like I'm not gonna do like what I did on the that truck over there. I'm gonna keep this one all original. Clean yeah, it in up. case you don't know what he's talking about, guys, I know window tint's pretty dark, so he doesn't like the window tint, and I kind of agree, I don't like it either. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah, this is one clean find. I mean, I got such a good deal on it, I can't just see myself letting it go. You don't find them like this. No, you don't. Not today's prices. Originally, I wanted to put wheels on it, but I think I'm going to keep with the rallies. Probably do a 5.7 drop with the original rallies. Get those rallies clean, put some water tires on them. Mm-hmm. I agree. Definitely going to have to get some exhaust. Yeah, that one's a little bit... You got some cancer on the inside. The most impressive thing of this whole truck is that QJ right there. How that thing just fires right up. You know what, Trey? Let's go ahead and end this video off. It's been sat in about 15 minutes. Go ahead and turn the key and see if that fires up again. Find the keys. Uh-oh. I think he needs to make about 16 sets of keys. <laughs> that thing keeps moving all over the place. <laughs> Get back with us on that. Oh, there they are right there, I think. Yep, there they are. Alright. Man. Can't beat that. Alright guys. That pretty much wraps this video up. Like I always say, until then, thanks for watching. Any final words there, Trey? Man, thanks, Charles. Appreciate no problem, you. man. I had fun. I had a lot of fun today. Yeah. I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>